Hey, Julian from AWS. In this video, I'd like to talk about one of the new capabilities that we launched at reInvent 2019. And uh, I mean Amazon SageMaker Debugger, which is one of the most exciting ones, if you ask me. SageMaker Debugger gives you the ability to pinpoint and uh, understand weird training issues that could be happening during your training jobs on SageMaker. Um, this is uh, compatible with uh, the built-in XJBoost algo, as well as uh, the TensorFlow, Apache MXNet, and PyTorch built-in frameworks. So there's a whole bunch of information in the documentation. We'll, we'll get back to that in a minute, but let's not waste any time and let's look at some code. So here I'm going to show you an example based on uh, Keras, uh, the high-level API in TensorFlow. But what I'm going to show you is really very similar to what you would do um, with the other algorithms and frameworks. Okay, so here I'm trying to classify the fashion MNIST dataset using a simple um, a convolution neural network. And I will put the link to this notebook in the video description. And here's the code. And if you're used to Keras, you know, this is really vanilla Keras. The only change here is really those lines here um, that um, uh, help me implement script mode, right? Which is the, the default way of training um, uh, framework code on SageMaker. Okay, so uh, I have another video out there for, uh, for script mode. So look, look out for that one if you want to know more, but it's not really important here. Um, then I just grab the, uh, the data set and I do some very basic uh, normalization and, uh, and uh, one hot encoding. And then I build my model and then I train and, and that's it. And I save the model. Right, so this is really vanilla Keras code. There's nothing specific here um, with respect to debugging. I'm just using this exact same code, and uh, and we'll see how this works with uh, debugger. If I was using uh, a lower level API in in TensorFlow, if I was working with uh, TensorFlow, uh, the tf.estimator objects or, or the low level API I would have to uh, I would have to add some extra code um, and I'm showing you how to do this in uh, in the blog post that I wrote for uh, uh, for the launch and again I will put the URL for this in the um, in the video description and this shows you a lower level example when you can customize exactly how you want debugger to work but here I want to keep it super, super simple. It's an introduction. And um, this is really, again, unmodified Keras code. OK, so upload the data set to S3. And then, as usual, configure the SageMaker estimator for TensorFlow. Um, and I think by now you're getting used to this. Uh, pass the script. Um, define how much infrastructure I need. and the only change here is I'm going to pass some rules. So rules are uh, SageMaker debugger built-in rules or custom rules. You can write your own. And each rule is going to check for a specific condition during the training job. So here, for example, I'm, uh, I want uh, SageMaker debugger to watch for loss not decreasing which would probably mean that my training job is not uh, learning properly. And I want to check for overfitting, meaning it's probably learning too well, and it's not going to generalize to, uh, to new data. So in order to use this, uh, you just need to import those new objects, rule and rule configs from uh, SageMaker.debugger. OK, so make sure you have the late SageMaker SDK. Otherwise, you might be missing this. And that's it. So then I call fit to get the training job going. And if I look at the training uh, log, what I see here is um, the training job starting. Okay, and I, I would uh, I would still see this in the, the SageMaker console if I if I looked for it. And I also see these extra lines telling me 
debugger has launched two debug jobs. Uh, so one for each rule that I configured. And these are actually run on another SageMaker capability called SageMaker Processing, um, which lets you run um, you know, feature engineering or model evaluation jobs. Uh, and we also use it internally for um, debugging jobs. So how does that work? So what happens is that the training job uh, will automatically save uh, all kinds of tensors to Amazon S3. Okay, so it's going to save um, it's going to save uh, uh, metrics. It's going to save uh, weights. It's going to save generally uh, all parameters of the model in training. So for Keras, by default, as we will see, we save a number of things. Again, if you work with uh, lower level APIs, you can um, you can save uh, you can specify the tensors and the collection of tensors that you want to save. Let's say you want to save all weights or you want to save all gradients um, and you want to save uh, extra parameters. You know you can uh, very finely configure how that works. So, like I said, the training job is going to save that information to S3, and those two debug jobs are going to read the tensors that are saved to S3, and um, as they become available, of course, they're going to apply the rule that they've been configured for, and they're going to start looking for you know, loss not decreasing or overfitting in this case. Um, there are many, many more rules, by the way. Uh, I can show you a list here. So these are the built-in rules available. Uh, so dead relu, they, they have really cool names. Uh, dead relu, exploding tensor, poor weight in it, saturated activation, vanishing gradients, all zero. Well, that's probably not very good. Class imbalance, confusion. Yeah, I'm wondering. Oh yeah, that's the confusion matrix uh, check. Uh, loss not decreasing, etc., etc., etc. Okay. And of course, for each of them, let's click maybe on Vanishing Gradient. Okay, so you get lots of information here. And um, all right, so this one would look for uh, gradients basically going to zero, meaning uh, you know your weights are hardly going to get updated anymore and your training process is, uh, is living dead, right? Uh, yes, it's still running, but it's not updating anything anymore. So you're just wasting CPU time or GPU time, right? Um, so you have you have examples here um, and documentation. You also have lots of cool notebooks in the Amazon SageMaker examples uh, repository on GitHub, showing you the different libraries, different uh, configurations, and there's even example an example for custom rules here, which is pretty cool. Okay, so lots of documentation, and of course the SageMaker SDK. Um, that basically only requires that uh, you pass that rules parameter to uh, to the estimator. It's here, right? It's in the base estimator, so uh, it's going to be supported by all the uh, specific estimators for TensorFlow, etc. Right? Okay. Um, so how did we do here? So we wait for a few minutes for this to complete, and I guess we can see if I go to the experiments. Um, pain here and I just refresh it. I guess that's the last job. So I can open details for this. Okay, and I can see metrics. So these are all the metrics that my job uh, saved. I can see the training parameters. I can see the artifacts where the where the data is, uh, where the model is, sorry. Um, extra AWS settings, and I can see the debugging status here, okay? So I can see that the loss not decreasing debug job did not find any problems. So loss steadily decreased over the, the epochs, and overfit did not uh, happen either, so uh, no, no worries, right? So I can see uh, extra information, I can see the RN for the, um, the actual jobs, uh, the actual uh, SageMaker processing jobs that were run. So, okay, that, that's all good. Now, let's keep exploring a bit. 
So I could describe the training job, right? Uh, and I could figure out that same information that we just saw in SageMaker Studio. So no issues found on those two debug jobs. Okay, um, but let's keep looking, right? Because we're curious. So this is the uh, location, the output location where um, debugging information has been stored. So as the training job ran, it saved automatically those uh, um, uh, those metrics and those uh, that debug information to S3. So that's the actual location here. So if we list that location, yes, we do see that uh, um, there's a lot of stuff here, right? And of course, it's not <laughs> human readable like this. But if we use the new SM debug SDK, so again, make sure you have that one installed. Uh, just pip install SM debug, I guess. We can um, run. Uh, we can create a trial from that uh, that collection of uh, debug information, just like this, super easy. And we can see uh, some information on that trial. So we see, of course, the location of the debug information. We see the steps. Okay, so information is saved at periodic steps. Um, here in Keras, it's done by default. Again, if you use lower level. APIs you can customize much more, uh, and we see um, we see tensor names, all right? So we see the, the collections, so weights, biases, gradients, losses, metrics, blah 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 blah. Okay, so all that stuff is uh, is configurable and, and available, and we see metrics uh, have been saved, right? So we can just look at those. Uh, and we could look at specifically at validation loss, maybe. And if we print um, values for validation loss, then we see over uh, over different steps, uh, we can see the validation loss that, that was reported. And we can see it is decreasing. So um, indeed, you know, that training job looks fine. Uh, we could keep exploring, um, but this is really the uh, this is really the bulk. Of the of the service, uh, configuring rules, okay, just like this, right? Just passing the rules. Again, these are all the rules available, and you can add your own. Uh, and then uh, you can just uh, using that SM debug uh, SDK, you can easily load that debug information and, and inspect, right? So for example, if you see, um, if you configure exploding tensor as a rule and that rule is, is triggered, and by the way, that sends a, a CloudWatch alert, so you could act automatically on it. If that stuff blows up, then you know you would use the SM debug SDK and you would look at, uh, at the specific tensors and you know you you would be able to find you know over time what's happening and uh, hopefully you would figure out which layer is responsible for uh, for causing the problem or which uh, which operator okay but that's uh, that's how you do it right just configure the rules and then use the sm debug sdk to inspect right all right so once again take a look at the examples uh, take a look at the doc Take a look at the SDK, even though there's not much more than what I showed you, and the blog post, uh, which uh, gives you a lower uh, level uh, TensorFlow example. All right, well, I think that's it for uh, SageMaker Debugger. Again, one of my favorite uh, launches from this year at reInvent. See you around. <laughs>